welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Jared Christmas and Russell Howard, Jack Whitehall, Hugh Dennis and Nick Rabinowitz. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the new government's top brass. But what does C-A-E-B stand for? Is it Cameron and Errand Boy? <laughs> <laughs> that could be it. That's a list of the things he's in charge of. Coats and everyone's bags. <laughs> Is it the worst ever carry-on film? Carry-on <laughs> and economic bulls up. <laughs> Is, is it he... just a list of things we can't afford anymore? Is it <laughs> care, homes, army, education, buses? <laughs> that, that was the worst cut of all when they said that. <laughs> is, it a, is it crap advert for elite breeding? <laughs> I know what they're doing. They're actually discussing who they're going to invite to their pool party, and they've just gone, crikey, anyone except Barrymore. <laughs> is it simply coffers are empty? Bollocks. <laughs> they actually look like the worst version of Reservoir Dogs as yeah, well. Yeah, Reservoir Dicks. Look at them. It's not then Cowl Assembles Evil Boy Band. <laughs> EB. EB definitely stands for Emergency Budget, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm. Yeah. Coalition Announce Emergency Budget. Oh, Fine. Fine. well done. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, the answer I was looking for was Coalition Announces Emergency Budget. This is a story that Chancellor George Osborne has announced the Coalition Government's first budget with the biggest <coughs> package of tax increases and spending cuts in a generation. Osborne's tough budget included a VAT rise to 20% with public spending and welfare cuts to be detailed in the autumn. So what would be the big points of the budget? Well, and it, everything's gone up, we're cutting stuff. But... Wow, I love the, the <laughs> level of analysis we can bring to this debate. Uh, <laughs> Cut. Other stuff didn't get cut, you know. Yeah. Pff, yeah. Bummer. Uh, so, sorry, sorry. What annoys me? You keep, the fact that Osborne and Cameron keep saying we're in this together, we're all in this together. You're a multi-millionaire married to a multi-millionaire. We're not all in this together. That's like Vanessa Feltz comforting an anorexic. <laughs> All in it together. The bankers, they're still getting bonuses. That's like finding out Bin Laden got air miles after 9 11. We're not. <laughs> all in it the, timing of, the timing of the budget is terrible, though, because I think when they, uh, when they announced this, which was six weeks ago, they assumed that this week would be on a wave of national euphoria yeah. as England swept majestically into <laughs> the next bit of the World Cup. And it's all gone. I mean, the only thing that could actually make the timing of it worse was, say, if a British company was pouring oil. <laughs> Into the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> On the timing front, though, why not just hold it one day later? Why not just hold it at three o'clock on the Wednesday when the entire... Because then you could bring in anything. <laughs> Nobody's going to be watching. And meanwhile, on BBC Four, you can watch the budget. Nah. Uh, I mean, he could be there going, uh, you know, swinging cuts, usual stuff, uh, fat people into camps. As he could have said. <laughs> anything, anything. And he put the match was on and nobody would have seen it. Like, I think that's quite a good idea, do. though. Fat people into camps. What a fantastic idea. In fact, let's go a stage further. Let's give homeless people money to knock food out of fat people's hands. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing they said as well is, like, in these times of austerity, to get through it, everyone's going to have to be very creative. And I've already started thinking like that. You know the way they say there's no such thing as a free meal? I you found you go into gastro pubs with one of these. That's not always the case. <laughs> You can also tell that how bad things are, because I suspect that George Osborne is at that moment saying, look, we've no money, I can't even afford a new briefcase. <laughs> but why do they hold it up? No-one else does that before their day of work. You don't see a butcher <laughs> holding up a pig before he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the people get on board with that, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just the the pig like that. <laughs> He was basically asking the public, where are the cuts going to come? He wanted to know from the public. And you're thinking, he's only been in the job for a month and he's already run out of ideas. <laughs> you know, it's not our job to tell him how to do his job. That's not why we didn't actually elect him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Uh, so what measures were taken before even before the budget? What, what, what were they cutting? Oh, uh, they, cut, they cut the science advisor. Because who needs that when you've got Google? <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the thing that they've actually cut is, uh, and which is terrible really, they're taking 25% of every government department. But the, the stupid things they've cut, they've cut the visitor centre at Stonehenge, yeah. so, oh, which is oh. bad because that's, that, honestly, that's going to piss off the Druids. <laughs> And they've, cut, lobby, they've cut the search and rescue helicopters, yeah. which is which is bad. And Cameron will regret when he's been kidnapped by druids. <laughs> <laughs> the the Stonehenge, Stonehenge was going to cost twenty five million. I have I've been to Stonehenge. I've seen yeah. Stonehenge. Mm. I don't think it really merited a twenty five million pound. You can walk it in three and a half minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think a leaflet would do the job very well. Uh, <laughs> leaflets are very quick to publish and they don't cost 25 million. Hand out one of them, you're around three minutes, you're back on the road classroom. <laughs> the visitor centre, they were going to spend 25 million pounds demolishing it and then building another one further away from the stones. Move the stones. <laughs> You can move them. These days, our technology can move them and notice. You can move Welsh them. dudes with tree trunks and then roll them down the hill. That's you know, what they did in the first place. Can I yeah. tell you, we yes. actually, our, our president is a, is a druid. That Jacob Zuma. Is that he actually Jacob made a, a whole corruption trial disappear before he was elected. Yeah. Wow. Better, better than your last present, Tabo and Biki. Yes, uh, yes. Crazy, I can solve AIDS using vitamin pills. Uh, Zuma you may have heard, is, is a polygamist. He's, he's married to three wives, and he's only going for 13 more. <laughs> yep, it's official he's going to finish on, on 16, because he misunderstood the priest at his first wedding, who said to him, four better, four worse, four richer. <laughs> They keep blaming Labour. The, rest yeah. of the, the reason why it's going to be so tough is because of Labour. That's a, they're like an evil stepdad, aren't they? Gordon wasn't like that. Gordon isn't here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Help me kill your cattle. There'll be nothing for dinner. <laughs> George Osborne's nickname is apparently Boy George. Yeah. And then the House of Commons, that's what they call him. And it's funny, because every time I look at him, you know, I do think, yes, George, I do really, really want to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> The Conservative government, one of their big things was to freeze the civil list and take money away from the royal family. And I thought it was quite, you know, like the Queen said that she's going to have to cut down on her spending. And I thought, boo hoo. And then I thought, someone needs to tell that woman about cash for gold. <laughs> <laughs> an envelope, her in the yeah, tower absolutely. ramming Billy the crown. Into <laughs> <laughs> an envelope like but there that. Was... Get another jiffy! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> in other news, what's going on here? This is a pretty bad wife swap for Sarkozy. Um... <laughs> when I stand up, this is where my head comes to. <laughs> oh. it, it almost looks like he's. Um, it almost looks like he's proposing to solve everything with paper, scissors, rock. Are you sure it's not like you're like, ah, you, you must be this tall to rat my wife. Uh... <laughs> I think he's he's saying. Uh, can you lend me some money, David? I'm a little shot. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it that Samantha Cameron is with child and Carla Bruni is with a man the size of a child? <laughs> so I suppose it was over for the 70th anniversary of some broadcast by Charles de Gaulle, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. It, it said he was years. over here to discuss the French contribution during the war over lunch. I was like, ha! That'll be a pretty quick lunch. <laughs> 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 yes, it was the 70th anniversary of Charles de Gaulle making a uh, radio broadcast uh, to, yeah. you know, uh, initiate the French Resistance, basically. Cameron presented him uh, with a commemorative box set of Allo Allo. Uh, <laughs> as a thank you from the British people for the excellent work done by the French. Uh, OK, at the end of that round, the point is going to Jack, Hugh and Nick. <laughs> Now we play a round called George Osborne's Big Red Budget Marks. <laughs> this game involves Nick, Jared and Jax. If you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the Wheel of News. Wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winners, whoever I think, is the funniest. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Nationality. Who wants to come in on that? I'll take it. Jared. Uh, like most of you, um, I've got a nationality. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm from New Zealand, and, um, 
thing is, growing up in New Zealand was pretty tough. It's pretty tough, uh, especially with the name Jared Christmas. Uh, that's my real name. Jared is spelled J-A-R-R-E-D. Thanks, Mum and Dad. That's Jared. <laughs> Cheers for the double whammy of Christmas as well. Woo! High school was a treat. For a whole year, I had a teacher. Whenever she was calling the register in the morning, I was never allowed to go, Hi, hello, I'm here, good to see you. No, every morning it was Anders, present, Brown, present, Christmas. <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to show off or anything, but uh, I've got an older brother. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. And uh, he's, uh, he's in the New Zealand Army. It's just him. And um... <laughs> now you're laughing because you're thinking, New Zealand got an army? What was the last conflict they were involved in? Lord of the Rings, that's what they did. <laughs> well done, Jaya. Thank you very much. Okay, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is South Africa. <laughs> We have the dung beetle. Some of you may have seen the dung beetle at the opening ceremony of the World Cup. The dung beetle in the language of Kosa, which is one of our 11, I actually speak, uh, is Kosa. It's actually the dung beetle is Kotwane. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to say, I'm fine, thank you, in Kosa, you say, Kaba Kab Kab Le Vinegar. <laughs> you coming to South Africa, learn that language. It'll open doors for you, like, mwah, mwah. <laughs> And we've tried the red button to get rid of the BBC commentary in South Africa. This is not a lie. We have to listen to your commentary. And what a lot of people are doing is, is turning the sound down on the television and putting the radio onto Radio Corso because those commentators are a lot more exciting. I watched England play America. And that guy came on and he was like, Zim bin dabamato da! Just the beginning, and then he came on and said, Some of Colum that roughly started again. Am I lions? But that in that USA, Tati Ball and Nango Tati Ball, Stephen Gerard, Utangeras Kakulu, Stephen G. Oh, Stephen G. Look at that for Rooney, Nango Looney Rooney. Why is that the ball of USA? Tati Clint Tempson, Tati Shot, Robert Green. Oh, Pata Finger. Leave us with Jack. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. OK, it's charity. <laughs> Jack. Um, I find charity quite confusing. I, I was walking down the street the other day and one of those women with a blue NSPCC bibs and a bucket and a clipboard came up to me. She said, do you like kids? I said, surely there's got to be subtler ways of catching sex offenders. <laughs> But, uh, I do like the people that go and do it, charity work, when they, like, leave school and stuff. The girls that go off and do it for, like, a year, and then they come back and you realise the only reason they've done it is so they can shove it down your throat. Like, oh, my God, it was so amazing. We went to Tibet. Oh, literally, where to start? Preferably near the end. Oh, no. <laughs> Me and my friend Viskiri, who's ethnic, by the way, did I mention, and Cassandra, who's probably working class and has a penchant for benefit fraud, well, we just <laughs> talked about Tibet making the most amazing Thai grass, talking about, like, 9-11 conspiracy theories and foot massaging lepers. And we found the most <laughs> wonderful little monastery on the foot of Mount Hitra Pitra Matra Fikatra Atu. <laughs> and we stayed there for weeks just helping the orphans. <laughs> it just makes you think, haven't the orphans suffered enough? <laughs> I, I did it though. I, I did a bit of charity work once. I, on my gap year, I went and did a little bit of um, volunteer work in a special needs school for children and just playing games with them, football, tennis. And it does genuinely make you feel really good inside because you always win. <laughs> well done, at the end of that round. In the points go to the middle Next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Jared, which yep. category would you like? Oh, jeez. Um, sport? OK, your category is sport. The answer is 3.5 billion. What is the question? Is it how many goals the North Koreans are being told their team scored in this world? <laughs> <laughs> is it if Piers Morgan got murdered, 
how many potential suspects will there be? <laughs> Is it how many men are there on the planet with a lower testosterone level than Serena Williams and her brother Venus? <laughs> How what is the top speed in miles per hour of Stephen Hawking? <laughs> in the last week, how many plankton have gone, have you got any shampoo, I'm really oily? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many times James Corden's been on TV since the World Cup started? <laughs> what position is Fergie now in line to the throne? <laughs> How many people cannot understand Emmanuel Adeboyor? Still. <laughs> is, it, is it after extras, how much does a £5 <laughs> Ryanair flight actually cost? <laughs> uh, how many children have to be born before China initiate phase one of global takeover? <laughs> the, Glazer f <laughs> the Glazer family have consolidated all their debts into what easy monthly payment? <laughs> Is it how many times will this episode of Mock the Week be shown on Dave? <laughs> <laughs> this is every chance this is one of those times. <laughs> we're, we're all dead now. We've been dead for years. <laughs> dead for years. This is the fifth iteration of The Matrix. Uh, <laughs> still they show it to placate the batteries. <laughs> I'm going to have to move to the correct answer. Is it how much the World Cup is going to cost South Africa. That's very right. Well done. Thank you very much, Jack. That's it. <laughs> yes, uh, the question I was looking for was what is the World Cup going to cost South Africa? Yes, that's right. The World Cup in South Africa is going to leave the country with a bill of $3.5 billion. The original estimate had been $300 million, which wouldn't even eventually have covered the cost of rebuilding the Soccer City Stadium, where the final will be held on July the 11th. Now, that's, well, there's an awkward thing about this, because right, we um, record yep. this show on a Tuesday, England play on a Wednesday, it goes out on a Thursday, which makes it makes as difficult yeah, <laughs> to quite gauge the national mood uh, <laughs> two days in advance. We, we could get it right, we get it wrong. We're in sort of time paradox here uh, at this stage. There's danger if we incorrectly predict the result and then we're either massively out of step or correct, and it could be like Terminator or something or Back to the Future, <laughs> and we will end up accidentally you know, maybe sleeping with our own grandmothers, uh, <laughs> or, or worse yet, finding, going back <laughs> and finding out that John Terry has already slept with our grandmothers, <laughs> and it makes it enormously difficult to do. So, wow. within, that, within that unusual context, wow. I, 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 are you happy with how, the, how South Africa has been perceived around the world? Now? Yes, yeah. I mean, I think everybody's taken to the Vuvuzela. 50,000 of them have sold here. Yeah, we love it. We're oh. loving yeah, yeah, the yeah, Vuvuzela. Yeah, 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 excuse you, me. You, you, you've played a blinder there, if I can just say yeah. on behalf of the world, <laughs> well the done on the Vuvuzela. There are, there are positive All aspects. There are. <laughs> and this is quite interesting. Right, Nick, you. Give it a blow quickly. Hey. The voo -voo's hey. Okay. <laughs> right. Now, Dara sounds like a sickly Lurpak man. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I like your nick, but it sounds like a Wookiee having a tricky shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this noise, I'm sorry, I can't do it. You do it, you do it, right? Oh, you, you, no, you, you, one, one more, yeah, so one this, more time. Yeah, one more time. This, should be followed by Han Solo going, ooh, give it a couple of minutes there. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. We're holding on the Millennium Falcon toilets just for a second or two, Luke. Whoa. There are positive aspects to the Vuvuzela, being on, because people all over the world now realise how appalling it is to give a child a toy trumpet for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but that mate Dave reckons, T direct quote from my mate Dave, you know them Vuvuzelas? They're so loud they can kill a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? No, it's, it's not. It's oh, not true. Wouldn't that be an amazing oh, no. episode of Spring Watch? But I tell you what should. <laughs> I tell you what could what could actually kill them is the Tutuzela. Have you heard of it? What do you mean by Tutuzela? No, the Tutuzela is a reference to Bishop Desmond Tutu. He's actually it's a much higher much higher pitch. If you listen to him when he came on, he what a wonderful occasion and and that actually <laughs> and then <laughs> and then he made a speech after where he said what a wonderful say uh, let us. Uh, let us not forget. Uh, let us not forget. <laughs> I, I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Please stop. You're, I, you're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> the reason for keeping the vuvuzelas as well is great. South Africans come out like, uh, we're keeping the vuvuzelas because it's South African tradition. It's like, yeah, just because something's a tradition in South Africa, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be that popular with the rest <laughs> of the world. <laughs> It's an ancient, ancient South African tradition. goes back to 74. <laughs> <laughs> it's also very confusing to the English upper class, because somebody blows it and they go, Oh, someone's seen a fox. Fox is constantly going, Andy. They've actually banned the Vuvuzela from Wimbledon. And you're thinking, that is the one place where you would love to hear it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Imagine that on match point. It would be absolutely... <laughs> It, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, it's like, mm, it would be <laughs> strawberries and cream. <laughs> there would be uproar. Well, it's Wimbledon. I say uproar. There would be heavy tutting <laughs> and some people going, she. <laughs> you, feel, you feel so sorry for Wimbledon in a World Cup year because it, Wimbledon becomes their ginger stepson, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> Daddy, notice me, Daddy. Shut up, Wimbledon. Football sleepy. There you go. <laughs> My highlight, I enjoyed the uh, opening ceremony. What me and my mate like to do, right, is we always predict who we think is going to be player of the tournament. And I sent him a text that said, my tip is messy. He sent one back that went, well, stop playing with it then. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had that intruder come into the... Uh... Oh, that was a oh, beautiful thing. He, 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 said that he, <clears throat> he said that he went in there and told the England team they were disgraced. This is a bloke who was a mortgage advisor <laughs> who lived in South East London and supported Manchester United. His whole life is a disgrace. <laughs> I mean, why everyone's, everyone's making such a fuss about it. The New Zealand football team's inviting people into the dressing room just to show them the showers and go, look at this, would you even believe we're here? It's like getting, it's like getting upgraded on our flight from economy to business class, man. This is awesome. <laughs> They're being upgraded possibly into the next round. Yeah. That will also have happened, possibly will have had <laughs> happening at 3 o'clock on Thursday, right? Yeah. But in this case, of, they just wore suits to the early qualifiers and somebody mistook them <laughs> for an international football team. Oh, yeah, yeah. You must be in the last 16. Oh, yeah, OK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> brought on a bloke whose proper job it's is a banker. bank clerk. Yeah, yeah, and, I you're know it. and you're thinking, right, we've got a mortgage <laughs> advisor, breaks into the dressing room, gets a year for trespass, right? They've got a mortgage advisor, breaks into the dressing room, and he gets a game. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, had to take, he had to take time off work, unpaid leave <laughs> off work to attend the World Cup. Yeah, he's left incredible as that. He's left that bank in a state. I love the idea yeah. that somebody in Auckland, cashier number one. Where's Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the other ones have been the success story of the, of the World Cup. They've been amazing. And you've, what you've got to understand is New Zealand as a nation usually watches football thinking, pick that shit up and run with it. <laughs> <laughs> because we are obsessed with rugby to the point that every sporting team in New Zealand has to have a spin-off name from the All Blacks. That's why the uh, football team's called the All Whites. And, that's cause, and the amazing thing for us is out of all the Football World Cups to ever get into, <laughs> yeah. we got into the Football World Cup in South Africa <laughs> and we've sent the All Whites. <laughs> Okay, now we've come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. Are we at this week's topics? And then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject is unlikely lines to read in the Bible. <laughs> the characters in this book are entirely fictitious. <laughs> And Samson said, Lord, why have you given me all my strength in my hair? And the Lord replied, because you're worth it. <laughs> Noah noticed that the ark was sinking. He hated woodpeckers. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary and Joseph were turned away from the inn, for there was no room. But then a wise man came along, whose name was Lenny of Henry. And there was plenty of room at his inn, for it was a premier inn. <laughs> Jesus was born in a stable, so in many years later, when he left the door open and people said, were you born in a barn, he could say, yes, I was actually. <laughs> And then a trumpet brought down the walls of Jericho. <laughs> it was Joshua with his bloody Fufuzela! <laughs> and 
Moses arrived with the commandments. <laughs> Got some bad news for Dave the ox lover. <laughs> The Last Supper was a disaster. We're never going to Nando's again, lads. <laughs> In the courtyard, Jesus came across a man who couldn't walk. Brother, he said, have you been involved in an accident? <laughs> that wasn't your and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, which was a surprise, because the Met Office had predicted a barbecue summer. <laughs> Adam and Eve had two sons who could not work together. Their names were Lampard and Gerard. <laughs> about the author, this is God's first book. He has one son and he's a little bit touchy about gays. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things you won't hear your sat-nav say. <laughs> Don't be angry, but while you were getting petrol, I shagged your iPod. <laughs> In 300 miles, you will realize this gimmicky voice was a <laughs> terrible mistake. <laughs> At the next set of traffic lights, a cyclist is going to pull up next to you and give you a really dirty look like he's better than you. When the light turns green, let's see how good his balance is. <laughs> Turn right at the next junction for a bloody good dogging sight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, darling, how about you get out of the car and let your husband park? <laughs> Turn right. Wrong. I didn't say sat-nav says. <laughs> Chobu, lock the doors, put on your bulletproof vest, and don't leave me here. If you go away and leave me here, I won't be here when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> Bear left, and over to the right, squirrel! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just turned me on. <laughs> Hold on, I've got the map upside down. <laughs> left. Left. Your girlfriend's left. <laughs> <laughs> Next dinner party, you drink and I'll drive. <laughs> Did you turn the gas off? Did you lock the door? Did you? Did you? I reckon we should go back. I reckon we should go back. <laughs> Where the fuck are we? <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Jack Whitehall, Hugh Dennis and Nick Rabinovitz. to Andy Parsons, Jared Christmas and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Jared Green. Good night. Remembering the King of Pop in a Michael Jackson special on The Culture Show here on BBC Two at 10 to 12 tonight. And there's more comedy on BBC Three now in Lee Nelson's Well Good Show. Leave a taste of that coming up.